So on this live, I wanted to talk about um, buyer psychology. There's a lot of different pieces that go into that, right? And there's seven point whatever billion of us on this planet, which means realistically, there's seven point whatever billion different psychological profiles. But in general, there's probably a dozen different states of mind that a buyer would be in, in general. And it's going to break down into two categories. They're not at the right time, at the right place to hear your message. And it's going to be really hard, cold calling, knocking on doors. The couple of pieces on buyer psychology that I wanted to kind of bring up is really, if somebody's in the mindset of buying something, right? It's me, 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 what I want, what I need, what I'm interested in, what I, it's all right. It's, it's their want and need. So it's a me first kind of thing. A lot of, a lot of people selling something while they say, Oh yeah, I know that I, yeah, I, I get that. They don't really understand that. Um, which I find kind of interesting when somebody's interested in buying something, you don't need to talk about you or your experience or the results that you've gotten for other people or how good you are, or how smart you are, or how much you know about your craft or how good you are with the tool. They don't care, right? Some of them are going to ask you direct questions based on that. And there's a million different variations that, they're going to come at you with questions about how you know your shit and, you know, if what you can do can provide, but it's all them centered, right? It's a me first thing. The second major aspect of the buyer mindset is, and it's not always like a malicious thinking this, but it's always in the back of their mind, right? It's part of the skeptical aspect of it. How do I get this without getting screwed? right? That's always present. It's the underlying thing, which is why no like, and trust are such a huge factor. There's a lot of little things that you can do to up the no like, and trust factor. There's some natural ways to do it that are good and come from motivations of, of uh, positive and all of that. And then there's some tricks and tactics and techniques that a lot of people use, I would suggest not doing that. People can sense it, right? Everybody has a bullshit meter. Some people's are way more sensitive than others, but there's this underlying question that they've got. How do I get this without getting screwed? If you can understand that mindset that they have, that fundamental underlying tone, it makes having that sales conversation a whole lot easier. The third part of this is, and everybody's heard this, people make a buying decision based on emotions. Well, a lot of people stop there, right? The buyer psychology is, it's initiated by emotions, but for almost all people, towards the end where they start getting the cold feet and they're not sure that whatever it's because they're running that emotional decision through their logic filter. Right. And it's really like an 80, 20. So if you understand that, yes, if people get all emotional and they're all wound up and they're all ready to buy, and then all of a sudden they get this like weird, whatever your sales conversation needs to be able to shift and cover both of those. Typically when, when humans interact, there's one person that's kind of like guiding that exchange. And there's a thing that happens in nature with women where typically the alpha female, whether it's dogs or rabbits or humans or whatever, everybody else kind of follows their cycle, right? That kind of happens on an emotional level in an emotional exchange. Typically, if somebody gets really excited and really wound up and they're really emotionally invested in the decision that they're making about buying the thing that you sell, a lot of times that is contagious, right? And then typically the person selling the thing gets emotional and they're right. But as soon as that decision changes in their head from it's all great, this is amazing to but I'm not, 
if you understand that typically the 80% of that is based in emotion and then it has to be checked by the logic, if you can understand that it and know it and be conscious of it, it makes it really easy to make that transition in the conversation. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about in general on this channel is the mindset of both the buyer and the seller. Because really at the end of the day, that's like probably 80% of the entire equation, right? Pareto's law. Some would say that many things are 90-10. The mindset and the psychology that happens in communication between human beings is really about 80% of the sale, especially if you're not a highly trained salesperson. You have to really be aware of that because ultimately at the end of the day, that's what's going to help people know, like, and trust you and be able to make the decision if they're a right fit for you and your business. It's that psychology connection between buyer and seller that usually is enough to push it over the edge and them give you the commitment to buy. It kind of is the foundation of what I call the, the conversation, which is from first contact with a potential all the way until you're managing them as a client. That whole thing is called the conversation. Just remember, keep this in mind. They're always in a me first state. Their underlying tone, even if they, even if they come across like they're not feeling this, a concern is how do I get this accomplished without getting screwed? Don't screw anybody, but understand that that's a hurdle that they have to get over internally. Allow them the space to do that. The third piece of this is the emotions in making the decision and how it transitions to, they have to put it through a logic filter. When people buy emotionally and they don't put it through their logic filter, and then later they have buyer's remorse, it's almost always because they either didn't put that decision through their logic filter or they didn't do it well enough. If that's the case, it's almost always the seller who didn't qualify the potential correctly. Peace out, Cub Scouts.